Good morning, dear friends. On this Saturday of the fourth week of Easter, we are going to celebrate in honor of our Blessed Mother and ask her prayers and intervention. Intervention. Pray for, pray that she may be with all of us, her children, as we battle through this very difficult moment. We pray that her care and her love may grant us protection, grant us healing, grant us courage, grant us every good favor at the time of this great distress. I want to offer this Mass for all of you and pray for your families and pray for your intentions, pray for the things that cause you anxiety, the things that cause you fear, the things that cause you trouble and sleepless night. I bring all of them to God through our Blessed Mother and ask that you may feel her loving care and protection. I also bring our sick to God. I bring our sick who are in critical care and ask for her healing touch. I ask for our healthcare workers, pray for them. Pray for all those in our medical research departments who are still struggling around the world to secure a vaccine for this virus that our Blessed Mother, the Queen of Wisdom, may be with them and may guide their activity. And I also want to pray in this Mass for all those who have asked prayers, pray especially for Father Brian Connie, who is struggling with this coronavirus. We pray and ask that God may help him find healing. We also pray for all other priests and our family members who are sick at this time. Pray for Hector and Lourdes, who have also asked prayers. Pray for Aurora and Annie Marie Pauline Tan, who are also struggling at this time. Pray that God may bless them. Please bring your intentions to God and let us pray together in this Holy Mass. As always, let us go to God with love in our hearts. Our opening hymn will be Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. You reign on in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim on earth with thy children invoke your fair name Ave, Ave, Ave Maria Ave, Ave Maria Thy name is our power Thy virtue our light, thy love is our comfort, thy pleading our might. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us take a moment and accept your intentions. Just lift your minds to God at this time and ask through our Blessed Mother for whatever your needs may be. From this altar to God's altar in heaven, my prayers are that yours too may rise like incense before the majesty of God. Knowing that we are never ever going to be worthy to celebrate such glorious mysteries, let us call to God, forgive God's forgiveness for our sins and ask that he may cleanse us and make us worthy to participate in this table.
you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercies, your only son, while hanging on the cross, appointed Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Like her, under her, and under, like her, under her loving care, may your church grow today and every day and rejoice in the holiness of his children and so attract to it all the peoples of the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the Apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer together with some women and, the, and, the, and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, Alleluia. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom? Should I be afraid? Hallelujah. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. Hallelujah. Here will go the sound of my call, have pity on me and answer me. Of you, my heart speaks. You, my glance seeks. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Holy Mary, Mother, deserving of all praises. From you rose a son, of justice, Christ the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed, 
that word was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, first I would like to take a moment to appreciate your efforts in doing exactly what my little cat is doing. Hanging in there. Hanging strong. Now, um, the wind might get so scary. The terrain might get so uncertain. And the waves might splash with such force that we may get scared and thinking we will soon be overwhelmed. But we must do what this little guy is doing. We must hang in there. We must hold on there. And I know if we hold on long enough, God comes to our help. He never abandons us. He does come to our help. So I am so grateful for every one of you who is hanging tough under this very unlikely, un, unexplainable circumstances. No one has ever seen something like this. But we are rising up to the challenge, learning new ways of doing things, learning new ways of conducting ourselves, learning new ways of adjusting and adapting and just surviving. And I know that there comes a time when we will thrive again. Today, I just want to say two things. The first I would want to say is something I heard and I read yesterday. Then there was a report that came out about how many churches were filing for the P for the PPP. You know, and how many were not uh, were not accepted or approved to receive, you know, support at this time. And those some did receive support and help. Others did not. And based on everything I read, the bigger churches that had maybe bigger number of employees received something to support them, to keep their employees and to keep their payrolls rolling. But other smaller churches did not get that. And this is not just for the Catholic Church, it's for uh, synagogues, it's also for other denominations and other religions. So the first thing I want to apologize, I appeal to you. If you belong to a local church here in our country that is small, with a very small number of workers, so know that your priest did not get anything. Did not get anything to keep those workers on the payroll. And I'm not sure how they manage at this time. I cannot tell you how most of them are struggling. Yesterday, I also watched um, a pastor from another church who was virtually in tears, how hard it was for him and his family. And yeah, it broke my heart to imagine how these people who have volunteered themselves and their lives for the service of God's kingdom would have to struggle this much. So the first appeal I wanna make I know it's hard for every one of you, very hard for everyone. But the first appeal I want to make is for your priest, for your pastors. If you know you can reach out at least to your priest, wherever they are, I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about your priest, your local priest. Reach out to them and find out how you can help them, if you can. Call them and find out, is there something I can do for you at this time? Is there some way I can help? At this time now you may not be able to do much for them but just a gesture of reaching out to them and asking them if there's something you can do for them 
And this is not just about Catholics. It's for every minister of God's kingdom. So I encourage you. See how best you can show some love and some care. Even if it's just an email or a text message to check and see if there is something you can do for them. They may say no. But that might mean a lot. That at least someone cares about them. That can make a big difference. So that's my first encouragement. And if you don't have anything to offer them, maybe you want to pray for them. You want to pray that someone else who has will reach out and support them and keep those churches alive for all of us because we need them when all of this is over. So pray for your for your priests and pray for your pastors and pray for church leaders of other churches and other denominations. Most of them are in dire straits. I believe he will do it. God bless you. Um, today, I said, we're going to offer Mass of Saturday to our Blessed Mother and ask her help on all of us, her children, at this time. She has a, a miraculous presence wherever she went to, wherever she was, and however she was present to you. Here in, here in the Gospel reading, first in the first reading, we hear how the apostles were gathered together in the upper room and she was present with them. She is always present with her church and her son's church. So wherever Christ is, a blessed mother is present. She cannot be anywhere else because what binds our mother to Christ is unbreakable. It's an unbreakable bond of love, pure love. And so wherever the body of Christ is gathered, and wherever the children of God are gathered, she is always present with them. Because she constantly does for the church what she did for the head, Christ. And so she was with the apostles, the new church, the first church, the early church. She was with them in prayer. And in the gospel reading, we hear how she set out and traveled to a hill country of Judah in haste, the Bible said, in haste, to a little town of Judah to visit Elizabeth and Zechariah. And the scripture says, once she entered the house and greeted, something changed, something happened. That is my hope. And that's what I'm praying for. That's why I want to offer this mass, asking her, to intervene just as she visited Zechariah and Elizabeth that she will visit with you and your family that she will visit with you in your walk that she will visit with you wherever you are on that sick bed that you may feel the power of her presence her presence is miraculous it changes everything because she comes with the greatest power that ever was the power of Christ. But the one thing I want us to focus on, you know, I could go on because this is a very rich gospel, but the one thing I want us to focus on this morning is what Elizabeth said to Mary. What Elizabeth said to Mary. It says, Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Blessed are you who believed. At a time like this, where it is so hard, so hard to believe God's promises, to believe God's word, to believe that God has us in the palm of his hand. We may want to look to this proclamation by Elizabeth on Mary. Blessed are you who believed that what was promised by the Lord, what was spoken by the Lord, will come to pass. That was true for Mary. It was true for Mary then. It's true now for me, for you, and for everyone who would dare to believe. 
that what the Lord promised will come to pass. Because he himself said, there is no spoken word from heaven that will never accomplish its purpose. What he says he will do, he will do. But can I believe it? And even the Lord said, when the Son of Man returns, will there be any faith? Will there be anyone who will believe? Will, they, will there be anyone who will trust? Will I still find faith and trust and belief in the hearts of men and women? So I hope that that passage will speak to you this morning as you continue to feel the pressure of this time, as you continue to feel the heat of this time, and as the ground under you is shaking uncontrollably, that you can still trust that God is here, and that God is with you, and that what he says he will do, he will do. The last thing I want us to focus on or to think about is what our Blessed Mother said when Elizabeth had made her proclamation. She said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Wow. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Our Blessed Mother was able to see right there at that time when she was carrying God in her womb. I don't know what else was happening, but she was able to see and proclaim that God is great. God is great. She says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit, even at a time like that, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. I hope at the time of such great distress, that your soul can still proclaim the greatness of God and that your spirit can still rejoice in God, your Savior. I pray that your soul can still proclaim God's greatness and that your spirit can still rejoice in God, your Savior. As always, I like to end everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we thank you for everything that you do. Today we want to pray. We pray for all of your children who are just barely hanging on. They have felt and born the pressure of this time worse than anyone else. They may have lost families. They may have lost their businesses, lost their savings. They may have lost even the desire to want to be here, but are still hanging in, oh God. I beg you. I beg you in the name of your mother that they may feel the caring presence that comes from you and the assurance that you do have a plan for their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our priests. Pray especially for priests whose condition is very, very serious. Whether that be their financial state, their health, or the future of their churches at this time. We pray for pastors of other denominations, especially the young pastor whose family was in dire strait. We pray, dear God, that he may feel your comforting at this time. We pray for leaders of other denominations and other churches. Pray, Almighty God, that you may be with them who have offered themselves for the establishment of your kingdom. That you may preserve, prepare them, pre preserve them from distress and despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our healthcare workers. Pray for our doctors and our nurses. Pray for all those who have dedicated themselves for the caring of sickness and disease. Pray for medical researchers. Pray for those who supply our medical equipment. Pray and ask that God may bless them, that God may watch over them, that God may grant 
an increase in everything that they do. And that God may please, please reward them for their service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Father Brian Connie who is struggling with this virus at this time and all the other prayers who are sick at this time. Also want to pray in this Mass for Hector and Lourdes who have asked prayers as they are struggling in their own family. I pray for Aurora and Annie Marie Paulington too. I pray for people who have today as their birthday, our anniversary, so other special events in their lives, that you, O oh God, may hear the desires of your hearts and nourish the yearnings of their spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now bring all of your own intentions and your family's needs and cares from this altar and from your hearts through our Blessed Mother, through Christ our Lord that God may hear them and that God may bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end by asking our Blessed Mother to pray for us as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this day of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and all the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove. Teach us wisdom, teach us love. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruits of a vine and work of a man's hands, which will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Lord, accept our gifts and make them the sacrament of our salvation. By its power, warm our hearts with the love of Mary, mother of the church and our mother, and join us more closely with her in sharing the redeeming work of her son. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We especially praise you and proclaim your glory as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. She received your word in the purity of her heart. And conceiving her and conceiving in her virgin womb, she gave birth to our Savior, and so nurtured the church at its very foundations and beginning. She accepted God's parting gift of the cross, God's parting gift of love, as she stood beneath the cross, and so became the mother of those who were brought to life through the death of her only son. She joined her prayers with those of the apostles, as together they awaited the coming of your Holy Spirit, and so became the perfect partner of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she cares for the pilgrim church with a motherly love, following its progress homeward until the day of the Lord dawns in splendor. Now with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like you do for, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us now offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me to you and your families at this time, may the peace of God be with you. May the love of our Blessed Mother overshadow you and may her presence give you protection. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Savior Jesus, the Son of Mary, our brother. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be clean. During this moment of spiritual communion, let us lift our hearts and our minds to God and ask that he may be with us, that he may bring us, personally bring us his body and his blood at a time like this where we are unable to attend Mass physically. That these angels may nourish our lives with the spiritual benefits from this sacrament, from this altar, to our spirits and to our souls, that he may heal our sinfulness, that he may redeem our struggles, that he may bless our sacrifices. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we have received the foretaste and promise of the fullness of redemption. We pray that your church, your children, who are going through a very critical and difficult time in their lives, through the intercession of our mother, your virgin we proclaim the gospel of hope and peace to all nations and by the power of the one spirit we reach to the ends of the earth with the light and promise of your spirit we ask this for the same price our lord amen Let us say the prayer to St. Michael, the Archangel. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cross into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits that wander through the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment and express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this month of our Blessed Mother as we pray. I hope that you may feel the mantle of her soothing protection, shielding and covering you and your loved ones today and always. As always, I like to end everything I do and say with the reminder that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. With the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mass tomorrow is at 9 o'clock, same time today. As today. For our final hymn, we will sing the Holy Queen and from the above. A holy queen enthroned above, O Maria, Hail Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, Triumph of ye cherubim, Sing with Oh, see, seraphim, heaven on earth resounded in salty, salty, salty.